Thanks to Avira for sponsoring this video. All right, so it's challenge time. Where were you five years ago? And are you that same person that you were back then? So for me, uh, I was still frantically trying to run a website, make a video, and I was a dad for a second time. It was an insane time in my life. And I think it's interesting to look back five years ago, and not just like personally, but also companies that we talk about here in the channel and see how they've changed. Give them a check, give them a grade to see if they've addressed the concerns, the product line has changed, the software has changed for the better. And coincidentally enough, uh, almost five years ago to the day, Ron Prita, who used to be a host on the channel and still a good friend, did a video called A Pissed Professional, talking about how Apple had completely forgotten the professional. And in that video, laid out example after example for where Apple had totally gone astray. And for reference, pre-iPhone days, Apple was a business that was founded on professionals, graphic designers, editors who relied on their hardware and software to do their jobs and make their livings. And then the iPhone changed everything for Apple. So I wanted to revisit the arguments five years ago, give Apple a grade, see if they've made things better for professionals. So five years ago, the iPad Pro had just come out and it's pre iPad OS. It was just a big old iPad. They introduced the pencil, which brought some new things, but it's an asinine way uh, of charging it. And Ron made the argument that what is Pro about it. You could say it's a great device or not a great device depending on who you are and that's a different conversation. But the truth is is that on iOS there's no way you're making that a pro device. No professional graphic designer is walking to work with just an iPad Pro saying this is all I use. It may be something they use in conjunction but to pitch it as a pro product when it's running iOS really is just false marketing in my opinion. Uh, and clearly Apple recognized the need to change the iPad line, right? The iPad Pro name stuck around, but we started getting things like iPad OS. We started getting things like the new generation of iPad Pro, where sort of they can start replacing a consumer. And could you be a person in the definition of professional who uses an iPad Pro to get paid, to do your job and make a living? And I think the answer is now yes. I mean, you can look at, you know, friend of the channel, Drew Photo. Whew. What's up, guys? One of the most talented photographers I know that makes his entire living editing on an iPad with an Apple Pencil. Uh, and for people like him and others, that's amazing. And I think what Apple's done has made a product that can be tailored to professionals, certainly not video editors, but folks who do professional work, but also want that prosumer experience. Still want to consume media, watch YouTube videos, watch Netflix, but also something that can get work done. And in that aspect, I think Ron's complaint, Apple has addressed really well. And certainly bringing Mac OS to the iPad would be a huge step in making it a real, you know, powerhouse editing machine and can do anything that any computer can. And maybe with the M1 chips being a thing, we'll see that eventually. But as far as the iPad Pro goes, I think Apple's done a really nice job the past five years actually having the line earn the Pro name in it. And all days I'm talking about the OG iPad Pro, I keep thinking about the AirPods Max and these headphones that are really good at what they do, but I have a hard time understanding like where they fit in the product lineup. But I'm thinking in five years, I'm gonna revisit this and be like, man, look how amazing these new AirPod Maxes are. At that point, they'll probably be AirPods Pro Max would be my assumption. Um, you can see maybe this, this product line going the same direction where it wasn't really fully formed when it was released, but evolved into something that became more useful down the road. So one of the other arguments that Ron made, and this one, I remember thinking it was asinine and made no sense that Apple had this, was their cinema displays. There's big, thick boys that were thicker than the IMAX, even, even now. And that was the display that Apple was hawking and selling. Uh, and that clearly made no sense. And Ron's point was what they did with displays, which was go from matte to glossy. Now in the middle there, they did have the option to pick during checkout, but now you can't even get a matte display. For those of you who don't know, the reason you want a matte display if you're a video editor or photographer or something is because glossy displays actually distort what your color space really is. It makes images more saturated than they actually are. It brings blacks much deeper than they actually are. So it doesn't give you an accurate depiction of what you're color grading or what you're editing, which is incredibly annoying. And this one, I mean, hot damn did Apple course correct. I mean, they went from like a zero to like a 500 uh, with one product. It's obviously the pro display 
XDR is the most pro display I think a pro could ask for. And they've given you the options of glossy or matte. Uh, I've got a new beautiful design. Now the price, certainly expensive, but if it's something that you're using to do your job, you could potentially justify the cost of it. But they've addressed that concern as well. I think a lot of people had at the time. You know, now you've got a monitor that you can actually use, you can edit on if you're doing animations, color correcting, whatever it might be. You have one monitor that can do everything, that can give you accurate color, can look beautiful. And if you're more of the prosumer side and you want that same feature set, but in a glossy display, you've got that choice right now. Uh, Ron didn't, however, comment on the stand on the cinema display. I think he uh, would never have predicted that they'd be selling a thousand dollar option uh, on that side of things. But the Pro Display XDR, I think, really addressed that pro complaint and then some. Man, so remember the trash can? The trash can Mac was what Apple was selling five years ago as their pro line of computer. And I'm not gonna pour salt on the wound here, but it wasn't a success, let's just say. It wasn't the pro computer that people were, were hoping. Um, then Apple, I think, surprised everybody with the new Mac Pro. And that thing was an absolute beast. It's modular, it's beautiful. You could add what you want. You could finally have a computer professionals can up or down and get the perfect computer for them. At least that was that way for like a year. And then Apple was like, hey, we're gonna do our own silicon. Uh, you know that $40,000 Mac Pro you just bought? Um, sorry about Sorry about that. But addressing Ron's concerns from five years ago. It just showed a lack of effort from Apple's end. And they give you now a design that looks modern, but also gives you the option for specs that you can tailor to what you want it to do. And that was the problem with the trash can. You really couldn't customize it that much. Um, you couldn't really add really any off the shelf video card that you want. There was just less choice at least. Um, for the trash can versus what we have now. Now, obviously Apple is going to update the Mac Pro with their M whatever chip it's gonna be called at that point. I think that may continue the evolution. But here again, Apple took those concerns that people had five years ago and like clearly addressed them. So I got a question for you. What's your most important app on your phone? Doesn't matter if you're on iOS or Android. What's the one app that you cannot go without? But one app that should probably come like right to the top of your list is Avira. And you might not have heard of them, but they're offering a really amazing suite of services designed to do what they're supposed to do and keep your device secure. So there's a paid version where you can unlock things like password manager, automatically blocking those, those relatively annoying and common robocalls and spam calls uh, and a ton more. But in the free version, you get access to a VPN, anti-theft protection, and a ton more. Again, that's all in the free version. This goes all the way down to letting you know when you have OS updates and even deleting duplicate pictures uh, in your gallery. It's one app that can keep your phone safe, secure, and running smoothly. So like I said, there's a pro version where if you want to pay it, it will unlock a lot of really useful things as well. But at the very least, give the free version a shot. So whether or not you're worried about privacy or just want to block spam calls or just looking for a good password manager, uh, Avira gives you everything that you can want uh, in one package to help keep you and help keep your family safe. This one's like probably more like specific to, to maybe me and like YouTubers in general, but we used to do all our editing in Final Cut. That was how we did our editing, especially Final Cut 7. Like that's, that was like the go-to jam for video editing and it was awesome. Uh, and then Apple released, again, about around five-ish years ago, they released Final Cut 10. Uh, and I think by most people when it came out, it was like iMovie Plus. You couldn't do the things that you wanted to do. They changed workflows, changed timelines, everything was just different. And a lot of those features that people needed, even things like a and B cams, you couldn't really do that easily with your launch version uh, of Final Cut Pro 10. It was annoying. Um, and that was the pro version. This is a software that people were using for years and again, relied on to do their jobs. And someone like Ron, who lived and breathed in an editing program was left without choice. When this was first released, we saw just a massive drop off of features. This was when I immediately switched from Final Cut Pro 7 to Adobe Premiere. And so now Final Cut Pro 10 is still the software that Apple has out, but they have like just checked off every box. I think from complaints that were missing when it launched, bring back features from 7 and then add a ton more to now what we have with Final Cut 10, Optimized with Apple hardware is a 
piece of editing software, we've come back to editing on Final Cut 10 because it's so good and so apt optimized from a hardware and software standpoint. So for our use, I mean, Apple listened here. And it's such interesting to talk about this because usually the perception of Apple is like, they're gonna tell you what you want instead of listening to what you want. And I think you look back with the hindsight of, you know, five years, you can see that maybe Apple is actually listening more than we thought. To people who are saying, what do we want? What do we need? And that kind of begs the question, right? Like what's the next version of this video? What are the complaints now that we need Apple to address in, in five years as professionals or prosumers or casual enthusiasts who use their hardware? And I think it's very easy to see what those things are. Apple needs commonality across all of their desktop and laptop hardware. The M series of chips, whatever version has to be, needs to come out in all of its forms and needs to be as good as it is now on the entry level MacBook Air, it's to be sort of less scales better as it goes up the line to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, to the iMac, to the Mac Pro. If that continues, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the iMac, the, the Mac Pro are going to be absolutely insane. I love my MacBook Air so much because it is so fast and has incredible battery life. I can't even comprehend what it's going to be when those M1 chips come out across the line. But Apple needs to be quicker to adopt new technologies in the iPhone that Androids have. Uh, I'm looking at faster refresh rate as really a big one. Maybe be more willing to move to new designs, foldables, for example, leading in technology instead of staying back until it gets refined and putting it in. Uh, maybe the first mainstream phone that comes out with an under display front facing camera, get into the foldables, those kind of things. Other companies develop out in the open. Apple doesn't do that. Other than that, it's hard to predict where Apple could go. But five years is a lot of time and it's a little bit of time. And I think it was just interesting to go back and look at those complaints that we had that I think were really rational complaints. If you look at those comments, the video had 19,000 likes. People clearly agree that Apple had forgotten the professional. And looking back now, it seems like, you know, they remember to finally call us back. Um, and if I'm gonna give Apple like a grade on how they listened to the professionals, it's hard to not grade them positively here. I think it's a solid A, it's a, it's a check plus. It's an attaboy for listening to professionals. Now, not to say they don't have areas to improve because they do, but it is nice to look back at the benefit of a few years of hindsight and see how much better things have gotten.